Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're shifting slightly to Chanak Bear and Hill 971, peaks not far from the rest of the fight in Gallipoli. It consisted of British Major General Alexander Godley leading 15,000 British and Anzac troops against Ottoman Commander Mustafa Kemal Pasha and German officer Hans Kahnengieser of the 9th and 19th Ottoman Divisions. They consisted of approximately 30,000 men. This occurred between August 7th to the 19th 1915. Godley believed an assault on the peaks with the Anzac troops, supported by the 29th Indian Infantry Brigade and the 13th Western Division, could be successful by conducting a two-column approach. The right assault group would move up Rhododendron Spur to Chinook Bear, and the left assault group would move up the Hill 971. Ottoman command felt they could leave the area more lightly defended and that the terrain was not assaultable. However, Mustafa Kemal was positive they would be attacked but no matter how hard he tried, he could not convince command otherwise. The battle occurred in three distinct locations, the Rhododendron Spur, Chanak Bear itself, and the farm. The attack on Rhododendron Spur was divided among three locations known as the Tabletop, Destroyer Hill, and Old Number 3 Outpost. These locations were taken with some heavier losses, including the death of Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Baukop. When the positions were taken, it should be noted that the British and Anzac forces bayoneted the Turkish wounded and prisoners in retaliation. Eventually, the three Allied battalions converged on a knoll known as the Apex that was only lightly defended by 20 Turkish soldiers. The commander of this part of the assault, Colonel Johnston, halted his troops, though, in direct opposition of the order to assault the hill at any cost, and he thus lost out on the possibility of taking Chanak Bear. The hesitation allowed Ottoman troops to reinforce the positions, increasing the defenders from 20 men to more than 500 men with machine guns. The reinforcements comprised of the 9th Ottoman Division, commanded by German Lieutenant Colonel Hans Kahnengieser, and not long after that, Mustafa Kemal himself joined under a British artillery attack. Johnston saw the reinforcements arrived and once again hesitated, asking command to hold off the attack until nightfall. General Goodley denied this request and ordered Johnston to attack anyways. After the second charge, with hundreds of Anzac troops lying wounded and dead at the base of the peak, Johnston called off the assault anyways. Meanwhile, Godley himself, who was at the location known as The Farm, awaited the assault on August 9th on Hill Q. The objective was to climb Hill Q from The Farm. Meanwhile, the Anzac troops at Chanak Bear would assault as well. Unfortunately, Brigadier General Anthony Baldwin, commander of the 38th Brigade and tasked with the front of this assault, got lost in the darkness. Baldwin and his troops were unable to reach The Farm until hours late at 6 a.m., leaving the other units unsupported as they had already started the assault. The British unit that got the closest to the peak was Allenson's Gurkha's battalion, but they were eventually driven back by their own artillery who had accidentally started shelling them. As the British and Anzac forces regrouped and prepared to attack again, Ottoman General Kemal conducted a brutal, blunt, but very effective counterattack by assaulting the British as they recovered. 5,000 British and Anzac troops fought desperately, but the Ottoman troops overran the position at the farm and drove the British troops back. After pushing the Allied troops back and taking heavy losses, the Turks themselves pulled back to the ridge, leaving the farm as part of no man's land with no one claiming it. This signaled the end of the battle and the end of any real movement by the British Mediterranean forces for the rest of the Gallipoli campaign. Losses were heavy on both sides with approximately 13,000 men killed, wounded, or missing of the British and Anzac troops and the Ottomans suffered more than 9,200 killed, wounded, or missing. In 1919, after World War I had ended, burial teams had entered the area of the farm and still found the entire area covered in the bones and remains of the British and Anzac forces that had died there. They were then interred into the Farm Commonwealth War Graves Commission Cemetery. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.